In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. And in the middle of the world. My name's Paula Paul, and I've been at Holy Redeemer, I think, since 2010. So I grew up in the Holy Rosary District, which is Kersley School. So my mom raised us Catholic. Um, we went to Catholic school, kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, I got married at Holy Rosary, had my kids there, they went to school there, so I was there for a good portion of my life. You know, church every Sunday, we went to Catholic school, we were all very involved, so when I ended up, you know, with my own kids, I was super involved in the church. And then my mom died, and she was definitely the rock of our family. You know, she was the mom that called you and said, don't forget, tomorrow's a holy day. Got divorced a couple years later, and then the kids started going off on their own lives, going away to college and their first jobs. So while I was going to church, I just, I felt like it was going through the motions. I, I knew I wanted to be Catholic. I knew my faith was there, but I felt kind of lost. I felt, even though my brother and sister were there, I just felt like I was alone. You know, so I was kind of floundering with my faith. So that's when I decided to church shop, as I call it. And so I looked at the local churches and thought I would try Holy Redeemer. It's right about the time that I joined Holy Redeemer when my daughter shared with me that she was an addict. I, I'm, I'm divorced, um, it's hard, I didn't have any outside support. And I did it alone because who do you say, who do you tell, you know, that you have a child who's an addict? You know, I, I didn't even feel like I could tell my brother and sister because I couldn't even wrap my head around what that meant. And that's where I knew I just had to call on God for help because that was the only thing I knew how to do to get me through that time. When I first got here, this gentleman named Pete had talked to me about the chapel. And, you know, that's what, that's one of the places that I reached out to when I was having those horrible feelings of loneliness and how am I going to get through this, God? And, you know, what do I do with this? How do I help my daughter? How do how do I help me? And when addiction steals my baby girl and there's nothing I can do My only hope is to trust you I trust you Because it's so hard, you know, and, and who who do you talk to about this? So Bethine, who, you know, manages, runs the chapel, she was in chapel a lot with me and she'd sit next to me and I ended up sharing with her what I was going through with my daughter. And before I knew it, Bethine had all her prayer warriors praying for me, praying for Carrie. And so, you know, that whole power in prayer and numbers. And, and again, I knew God sent me to chapel for a reason. He knew that I needed, I needed the numbers out there. I need people, I needed family, church family to pray for me to help me know that this was gonna be okay. And, and you know, Carrie's in a really good place today. She's doing extremely well, but there were a lot of years she wasn't. And so going to chapel week after week and just knowing that countless people were gonna pray for whatever I needed, just like I was doing for them. And so even though I was raised Catholic and I've been in the church forever, I, want, I decided to go on an Alpha retreat. At my table, um, there was a young woman named Jackie and she was the one of the leaders of the table, and Josette was there too. And Jackie came up and asked if I would like she and Josette to pray with me. And I'd never done that before. And so we walked up and stood at the altar and I kept thinking, can I tell them what I really need? So I did tell them about my daughter and the struggles that we were going through with her addiction. And here this beautiful young woman says to me, Yes, I understand I'm also a recovering addict. God knew that I needed to see somebody who was okay. Here's this beautiful young woman who struggled with the same thing that my daughter struggles with, and look at her, she's okay. Having people like that at church that you can, you know that they're praying for you out of the goodness of their heart, that God's led you to them because they're gonna help you feel better. They're gonna help you feel that closeness of God. They're not gonna judge. It's, it's all about us being together and getting closer to Christ. Just knowing that one person or two people, they're gonna pray for you, and it is. It's like a huge weight lifted off of you because you can just feel their love for you and in their devotion to God and asking God to help you. And, and that's huge. It's, it's, it's just such a great feeling. It's hard to describe. Oh.